Hey. What's up, everybody? Woo. I don't know if our intro went in or not. I don't know what just happened. We may have been just staring on the screen for a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's one of those days, but Are welcome, Waterbox Wednesday. Can you hear us? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we got some new corals coming in. If you guys haven't already, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, um, hit that notification bell. Yep. We are here every single week with you guys hanging out, talking about aquariums, freshwater or saltwater, um, and it pays to subscribe and smash that like button because we do give away. Also to chat with each other because we yeah. are giving away stuff every stream. Um, and today, Living Reef was very generous. Yeah, so today is a awesome one to tune in for. You guys are lucky. Not only are we unboxing a shipment of coral from Living Reef Orlando, um, love those guys down there, um, but also they're giving away a $50 gift card to a viewer. We're giving away a $50 gift card to somebody. So, you know, definitely currency for that, liking the stream. Also, drop your questions in the chat because we are going to be doing Q&A as we have yeah. time. Um, and it's also one of the currencies to win gift card is we like to see the people that are active in there asking questions, make friends, what's going on with your evening, um, all that stuff. So if you haven't, um, check out livingreeforlando.com if you're not in Florida Definitely. and lucky enough to have them nearby because they do ship corals and inverts um, all throughout the U.S. Ken, do we need to drop that intro again? I don't know. I just feel a little... <laughs> <laughs> We're too far in now. <laughs> We're committed. Feel, feel <laughs> We won't. Right. We won't drop it. I don't think anybody even noticed. Yeah, they're got good. We just had us weirdly. It was definitely sitting on you guys. I don't know if the audio was going out, but it was definitely sitting yeah. on you guys. Uh, okay. We got Florida people tuning in from Florida, Utah, Colorado, Toronto. Um, okay, Utah. You know, Utah. From Florida. Someone just called me from Utah. Was it you? Oh God, stalking. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. We appreciate y'all being here. As always, like the stream. Put questions down in the comments because that's yep. what we're here for. Um, and this is a pretty easy stream. We're just going to be on unboxing some pretty cool yeah. corals. So those have just joined. We are giving away a $50 gift card to Living Reef um, and then also one for Waterbox. So definitely get your questions in there. They're going to collect them throughout us doing the unboxing and then we'll answer some questions afterwards. So uh, Living Reef sent us a box of corals for the Marine X 110 arrived earlier today. We're going to unbox and put them into the Marine X this evening, you get to see um, them as we do. We haven't even opened the box yet. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna get a head on over to. Too. Did you mention that we're giving away a $50 uh, gift card for Living Reef? Yes, yes, twice. We. We're having a rough day over here. It's gonna be okay. Um, yes. So, Living Reef gift card and Waterbox gift yeah, card. Yeah. So, if you want, if you guys want to win one, either a Waterbox gift card or a Living Reef gift card, engage with us. Uh, whether it's telling us where you're tuning in from, or if you're asking questions about the corals that we're getting, or about Living Reef, or about Waterbox, or whatever, um, just do it. All right. Let's go to the Marine X and yeah. do this. Okay. I'll be over here. No. No, oh, you're not leaving. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. I can see you from here, but no, I'm gonna come over there and check it out. What the? Uh, we're waiting for the signal for that camera to come in. Okay. It's just you, Rich. Yeah, Run the is, show. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey guys, it's just me today. Um, <laughs> I did want to mention something and I spaced it. Oh, this is actually I think the first time we're going over to the tank live. We haven't done that. In a yeah, yeah. Long. Most of it's been pre-recorded. Should I get back on the screen? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm back. Um, <laughs> someone says, who is Living Reef? So Living Reef is a store we have here in Orlando. Um, they're called Living Reef Orlando, uh, often referred to as LRO. Yeah. So, but you can also find them online. So if you've looked through past any of our live streams and records and stuff, we've done a lot with them. We've visited their farm. We've, you know, gone shopping there. They've been on here for numerous Blue Fridays with fragging segments and all kinds of other stuff. Um, you know, so they're really, really cool. You'll see us working more with them, but they do ship all throughout the U.S. So if you're looking for coral, we 100% can vouch they are amazing. Their selection's great, you know, and I do believe that they also ship inverts. You're good. Cool. All right, now you go. Roger, I never forget to smash the like button, but <laughs> I hope you guys did because it is one of the currencies to win. All right, we good? 
All right, so here is our box from Living Reef that arrived earlier today. They ship all throughout the U.S. You get to see a good example of how it's going to come shipped to you. So we're going to go ahead and just get this open. Jess, up. I can watch you on the TV from over here. I don't it's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to turn your head. You can just watch me on the TV straight ahead. All right, so Living Reef Orlando. And of course, your stuff is going to be shipped in a styrofoam pair, and they do ship year-round, summer, winter, all of it. Nicely packed here. And get all that packing material out of the way. And here are a lot of our goodies. So we're going to pull these out one by one um, and then get them into the aquarium and also show you a picture from their website of what it's going to look like because a lot of times when you unpackage a coral, it does not look exactly like it's going to. It's kind of shrunken in or stressed a little bit from shipping. And then it'll take time to expand. So we're going to put them in, show you that, but also show you the reference photo from Living Reef of the actual coral. So this one here is a Space Invader Chalice. Now we're, we're mostly focusing on adding more LPS to the Marine X 110. So that is what they sent us. So I'll go ahead and show the Space Invader while you unpackage it. Yeah, do you want to come? Let me just put this. Here we go. I'm showing you here on the screen. Oh, okay. So there's the Space Invader there, what it looks like. And you'll see it just shipped here. Nice little protective cup. And this is what keeps it from like falling on its own flesh or getting smushed or stressed that way. It keeps it very protected in the bag for shipping. And that's something that you don't get everywhere. So here, I'm just going to take the little frag out and go ahead and we're here. So chalices tend to keep their color and look pretty much the same through shipping, which is great because they don't really have any large tentacles stick out. So this is going to be a really, really nice, bright chalice, colorful eyes. That's going to add some good pop of color onto the rocks here. All right. Next coral here says it is the New York Knicks Torch. All right, love names, which is nice because we actually do not have any Euphelia in this aquarium yet. And Euphelia is hammers, torches, and frog spawns. A very popular group of coral. Adds a lot of movement into an aquarium. And you can see here again, because they are so fleshy, this is really nice because it does protect them from damaging their tentacles during shipping. Yes, the question we always get, are you not going to dip it? Um, if it was from an unknown source, I would definitely go through and dip. But with it being Living Reef and us working so closely with them, um, I know their procedures and protocols and stuff like that. So I do not worry about any pest with them. And since he's going to open up with some pretty big tentacles, I'm going to put them off to the side. And the reason we're putting them on a frag rack first is because I want to make sure they just adjust and then I can put them onto the rocks when we have a little bit more time instead of trying to glue them and place them while you guys are watching. All right. Next one is a CC Cloudberry Chalice. Wow, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> that is pretty. All right. Another awesome chalice. That's going to add some really nice oranges and colors to the tank here. Question keeps being asked like 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, as a general rule, do dip your corals, keep an eye out for any pests, um, stuff like that. So, um, if it's getting from anyone besides the living reef, I would definitely be doing that um, here. But I think in the next 
less than 30 days, we'll, we'll talk about coral dipping. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't go any further than that, but we, we'll talk about that. Um, this one is an ultra blasto. Blastos are one of my favorite corals, and I think they're extremely underrated. They don't get enough attention. Yeah, blastos are awesome. They do really well if you spot feed them, that they will definitely produce more heads faster. You know, they can come in reds and greens. Um, there's even purples and pinks in the blastos. So you can see on here that they got all these little babies around. So that's how they reproduce it. They got the big head, and then they'll produce babies around it. Gets bigger, produce more babies around the bottom. So spot feeding these does help their growth a lot. Are people upset about the dipping or just wondering? Um, a lot of people just no dipping. Oh. Do you not dip? <laughs> You're not going to dip? <laughs> dip, dip, dip. Dipping, dip, dip, dip. dipping <laughs> is not recommended for your health. It's bad for your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this I'm one talking is about a different kind of dipping. The obviously. Fascination Favia. Oh, that is cool. We'll go here. This should be one that shows pretty good color even through shipping. And of course that'll intensify. You can see this is really cool. All the oranges, pinks, greens, a lot of different colors. I'm just gonna keep laying them out here. Daryl says he's highly curiously upset. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't have a reliable, trusted source that you know very, very well, definitely do dip. Even if so, dipping will always be an answer is yes, you should. You know your parents always say, do as I say and not as I do? Right, there exactly. You go. <laughs> um, all right, this one here is a Raptor Favia. Oh, God. Oh. That is going to stand out really, really nicely. Bright, bright green and almost purplish pink eyes to it for that Favia. Very, very nice. All right, Someone, next. Someone's getting a free frag rack promo right now. <laughs> We've had that rack for years. <laughs> this is Apple Jacks Bernadard Pora, I think. Bernadard Pora. Right, I'm curious I'll know what that one is. Oh, that's going to be nice. This is a good size piece. Look at it under the light here. So most of these are looking really, really nice out of the bag. You can see their color pretty well. So this one is all kind of sucked in, as you see from the photo that we put up there, is it will have like a fuzzy appearance as the tentacles come out. And like that nice red pinkish color and yellow green eyes. I'm gonna put them over a little bit to give them some space. All right, next coral out of here is a blueberry acan. Acans are like uh, blastos. All right, don't think you see them nearly enough. But same thing, spot feed them. They're going to grow a lot better for you, get nice and nice and fluffy and grow more heads onto them. Let's look at this one. You see the nice stripe patterns and stuff like that. So these are the main heads. And then around the base, like you see that little baby right there, they'll continue to grow babies around it and just kind of eventually produce this big chunk of colony of the individual Aiken hands, heads. So spot feeding is beneficial for those as well. One thing that people are asking is, uh, or mentioning is, it seems like a lot of them have never shipped corals to their house. Mm -hmm. But there's something that you guys got to remember. These corals got 
to either the distributor or the retailer in the cargo hold of a plane as well. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, they got shipped to either the store, so they always, they're on a plane at some point, right? So. Yeah, I mean, really, the cooler pack can either put in heat or cold packs, depending on the weather. Mm -hmm. And generally, you're going to find the coral is always overnight shipped. Soft corals may be able to do, like, two days, just because, like, zoos and stuff can kind of close up and last a while. Yeah. Um, and they're bagged with plenty of water. And, like, I love the cup method that Living Reef uses because it keeps them from bouncing around on the bag, getting stuck in the corners, yeah. or upside down. If they're sitting, like, say a coral has a fleshy, like, yeah, polyps, beat up. sitting upside on it for, like, the whole 24 hours or whatever it's shipping. That can cause stress and damage, but by like, keeping it like this and it's away from any solid surfaces makes it that much less stressful. So, you know, there is, of course, people that are more versed in shipping versus newer. Yeah, and there's course. a lot of little trade secrets that kind of make it better, but shipping coral is, I mean, I'm sure thousands of people, pieces get shipped a day oh, throughout yeah, yeah. the U.S. Living Reef, I'm sure, is shipping tens of thousands of corals a year. Mm -hmm. So they know what they're doing. They do it all the time. They run big events. Almost Don't monthly. be scared. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very common. That's how the corals got here. They didn't, you know. Don't come from reefs in the U.S. <laughs> no, they don't. And that's, that's exactly what I'm getting at. But even if these, a lot of these are aquaculture, yeah. at some point they were on a plane to get here. Yeah. You know. So, I don't know what that says, but it's Barry Winkle something. Ghani? Ghani. <clears throat> a Barry Winkle Ghani. Anne knows I love Ghani Aporas. So I'm glad to see that she threw one in here, or maybe more. I'm not even sure where we're at. Um, one more. So her and I share a true love of Ganiaporas. These are like our big red one that's in the, you can show them this. So this big red one is actually an ORA Ganiapora. So you see Ganiaporas get really nice long flowy tentacles. Um, they do require heavier spot feeding with like liquid type diets, but they're so big. They get so nice and beautiful and flowy. And then the cool thing is this thing will come out with these long tentacles, but you can't tell because they actually can like fully suck into their skeleton. So you really can't tell what it looks like now. That's why we put the picture up, but this one will get nice and flowy long tentacles to it. I'm trying to make sure nobody messes with each other. There you go. I'll move them out a little bit. All right, next one. Prism hammer. Prism <laughs> hammer, another euphelia for the tank. I want to know from you guys, if you've ordered corals online, uh, let us know. Let the other people in the, the comments know, because a lot of, I mean, I'm sure most of our viewers aren't uh, from Orlando, so yeah. they would have to order them. Yep. All right, Prism Hammer, he's all closed up. You can still uh, see that really nice reflective color that's going to come through on him as he puts all of his polyps out. There. That was the last one. Someone just named a coral and, it's, and it has to happen. What? It could be any type of coral, but they say the golden horse torch coral. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, that would be a good name. Good. All right. We're good. Heading back over. So those corals are going to stay on the, coral, on the frag rack. Horse torch. Probably for the next day or two. Once everyone is open, then I'm going to start placing them on the rock. I will not epoxy or glue them right away. We always give our corals at least like close to about a week in the spots to see if they're fully opening, their color's good. If not, you want to move them around every couple days to try and find a new location because your lighting and your flow is different in every single little spot in your aquarium. So where you want your coral is not necessarily where it's going to want to be. That's why I don't glue right away. Right. Because then you're just trying to pop off glue and all this stuff to just keep moving it around. So just give it a little bit of time, let them settle in. If they look happy, full and open, then go ahead and put them permanently in place. Do you typically leave the plug's base on there or do you pop it off? Um, it depends on the type of coral. So like those blasters and cans, you could technically take like a flathead or a scrape or something like that and like pop under them. But you oh, risk- no, 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 I, I meant, uh like the the plug base. Oh, the little thing. Yeah, because you know sometimes it's hard yeah. to get them, find a piece of. No, no. So it, it depends a lot on, I guess, who they have make their frag plugs or whatnot. But 
most of them should be able to if you hold the round part of the base. I take a screwdriver mm -hmm. and I go and clonk it off. Now some may not work as well, but a lot of times good ones have a little bit of a like a weak point right there so that people can yeah, knock yeah. the plug yeah. off. Um, you can also use bone cutters to snip them off. You can, you know, pliers to kind of break them, whatever, because there's no way that you have enough holes in your rock mm -hmm. to put those corals exactly where you want to with those plugs. And if you guys have seen like uh, any of the ORA episodes that we've done, mm -hmm. they talk about their plugs, which people tend to dislike because you can't pop the base yeah, off because they're so robust. But the reason they do that is because they're in such a high flow environment that the other plugs just do not work. They yeah, do they not rock stay too seated. much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, if you've never seen it, you definitely should go check it out. Is we have a full video um, on a visit to Ore Farms mm -hmm. through fish nursery, corals, um, sharks. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that they do really, really involved, and it goes over frag plugs too. But you'll see how they grow their coral. Um, but it's a really good video to watch if you have not seen it. Just type in Ore in the search bar. And bring that up, it's like 25 minutes, I think. Yeah. Steve Wilson says that he glues live animals to rocks, which if you guys aren't gluing live animals to rocks, then you should I try I mean, it. technically when you frag, you're cutting up live animals too. Yeah, so. you're cutting up live animals and gluing them to rocks. Which is even worse. Yeah. You got questions? Yes, sir. All right. Don't forget, we have a $50 water, uh, water box gift card and a $50 living reef gift card to give away. So stay tuned. Can you place chalices side by side without warfare? No, they will fight. Um, and it's going to depend on some are more aggressive than others. You may have one that loses a battle. You may have them meet in a common ground and then grow out from that point. But you don't really know. You want to give them their space. And if, if they do come in contact or too close, keep an eye out. But most chalices have little stinger tentacles that can reach out past where their flesh is um, and sting stuff around it. There's a, I'm just going to say this, there's a wonderful movie on Netflix, I think it's called um, Earth After Dark, and they actually show chalices. Um, Eating each other. And, and oh, yeah, yeah. They do it over a length of time, it's beautiful. <clears throat> Earth After Dark. Yeah, That's like a, yeah. that. On Netflix? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> Bryson said he loves the box openings. They're usually really popular. Yeah. What wave makers are the best to use? Um... I mean, I'm sure that's personal opinion, but we use Nero's and MPs here. Mm -hmm. So AI and Ecotech, um, they all work with the same app, controllable by wave pattern, speed, all of that. So it gives you more natural flow. I do say to avoid the ones that are basically stagnant all on, mm -hmm. no wave functions, no pulsing, that kind of stuff, because you're not really recreating uh, the natural flow, and it's not keeping stuff suspended in the water column if it's always kind of the same. Yeah, there's probably a hundred options. Yeah, there's a lot makers. that you're not going to spend as much on, but you're going to get a more stagnant yeah. flow. Invest in the ones that create the more ocean-like flows. It does benefit your corals. Yeah, and if you and if you guys, we use Ecotech AI just because they've been around for so long. Yeah, it's quality stuff. So, do corals need to be acclimated before sticking it in your tank? Um, I guess that's somewhat debated, but no, not really. Um, some may say yes, but for the most part, a coral, whenever they get, they are closed. So like you have zoos or gyneopores or something, and they're all kind of closed up when you put them in. As they kind of open up, that's sort of their acclimation time. Um, you know, of course, temperature should not be anything extreme. You can float the bags, that kind of stuff, but you don't really need to do the drip acclimation. Yeah. I think they feel kind of self-acclimate to the conditions in the water. Yep. <laughs> I glue clownfish to anemones. All right, Cole. That's one way if they want host, you just glue <laughs> yeah. them to it. Don't do this at home. Don't listen to that. Just a joke. <laughs> are clams hard to keep? They are. Um, they're going to be a lot more sensitive to water conditions, but they also, for the most part, need a lot of light. Yeah. They also need a lot of filter feeding food and they need a lot of calcium. Um, they also tend to, if you don't place them properly, they can get pinched mantles. You know, there are a lot of pests that can go after clams. Um, you know, there's just a lot that can kind of go wrong with them and they're not cheap and they're very slow growing. So like yeah. 
if you go and buy this nice six inch clam, you shell out the money for it. That clam's been growing for years. Yeah. Um, you know, make sure you're ready for it. Make sure you understand its needs, where it should be placed, lighting, flow, and feeding requirements, because they're definitely not a beginner coral. I would say they're definitely more advanced once your tank is very, very stable. I could be wrong, <clears throat> but I don't feel like I see clams available in stores nearly as much as I It isn't, see, because they are expensive. They are kind of specific on like their needs and their lighting requirements. Like you can't have like a softy tank with medium lighting and put a clam in there. Um, except for the ones that aren't super blue. People want the super blue ones, Maximas and Corsairs, yeah. but those are the ones that need the most care and they're the most sensitive and there's not a lot of places aquaculturing them. ORI is one of the few places that actually aquacultures or mari aquaculture, maricultures? Mariculture. Maricultures. Well, it's a mixture of both of them. Yeah. So for the most part, if they're being pulled out from the wild, it's going to be pretty limited numbers and the wild ones are going to have a harder time adapting. I have wondered then, though, and this is a total what? random thought that I had, that if that correlation is something to do with import restrict or you know, like export restrictions, or if it has to do with the lighting that we're using these days, like because you know back when we had metal halides, I felt like I saw a lot more clams. Yeah, and it could be a lot of import too, because like I said, you get a nice four or six inch clam, like that's been going in a long time, so it's, they don't easily repopulate. Or reef. like a, I could. This is in that video I know mm -hmm. with Ore, but like a one inch maxima is like years, right? Like two yeah, years, if he as three four. years. I think we did go over that in the Ore video, or I think also. Um, oh no, not the Ore video. It was one of our, I think, Blue Friday streams. Ore was one of them, and it was all about clams. Yeah. So definitely look up that one if you're looking into clams. Go back to, it's a Blue Friday, I think it was called All About Clams or something like that with ORA. And we go through like looking at their facility and like how long it actually takes to get to a sellable size clam yeah. um, requirements and stuff like that. It, it's astonishing. Like it's not a like turn and burn like with most of your other corals. Yeah. It's pretty wild. And more information on ch ch clams than you probably asked for. <laughs> Can you add as many corals as you want at a time? Um, okay. so. Technically, no, but sort of yes. If your aquarium is established, you know you're past your cycle, you've had fish in there, you have coral in there, the coral bio load that's added is so minimal. They don't make nearly as much waste as a fish does. Yeah. Um, so for your first round of coral, no. Don't go add 20 corals into your tank as soon as it's done cycling. Once your aquarium is established, your fish, everything's good, your dosing's good, yeah, I mean, you could technically go put 20, 30 corals into a tank if your budget allows, and your tank's not going to spike or have real issues with it because the waste production of corals is extremely small, and they actually do help filter the water as well. Um, there's several questions that... Uh... <laughs> if you guys could name a coral, what would the names be? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are wondering why you keep seeing sucky sucky in the comments... <clears throat> It's because we told them what we, we told you guys what we call our, so there, we have big uh, suction cups that we pick up the tanks with. Yes, right? the glass suction cups that if you have a larger tank you should use for moving. Yeah. They're called sucky suckies around here. Yeah, <laughs> so of course you guys always pick that stuff up and you just repeat it in the comments constantly. So if that's what you see that, we're talking about suction cups to pick up aquariums. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Kim loves to say, go get the sucky suckies. <laughs> so what would you call it? Huh? This question, what would you guys call a coral? Can't put me on the spot like uh, that. Golden horse. Someone already said it. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah, I got, golden. I got nothing. I yeah. got one more question. Okay. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Do you recommend filter socks or filter cups? Filter socks, man. Yeah. Um, we use it on every system. Filter cups have had their day. They were a big hit for a while. They kind of fiddled out a little bit more. Filter rollers, filter mats, whatever you want to call them. You know, there's a lot of people that do switch them and I also see a lot of people that switch back to filter socks after using them. Personal preference. But if you're gonna ask me, I've used filter socks for more years than I would admit that I am old. 
and I love them. I think they're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain, they filter everything out, like they're non-mechanical, they don't cost much. Like um, all the benefits outweigh the having to change them once or twice a week and put them in a washing machine or hose them out. So we forever, as far as I can ever see, are gonna stand by filter socks as our top choice yeah. of media room. I did have one that I saw on here that was a very, very good question for people that have like maybe never ordered corals to ship. And it was, do you need to be home when the corals deliver? Like, should I take work off if they deliver that day? You do not want to leave your box of coral sitting on your patio. Um, it's very rare that you're going to have a perfect temperature day where they could not get too hot or too cold. However, most companies that are shipping you coral will either have it shipped to your like local UPS or FedEx hub for pickup so that it can be held and not on a truck all day. Um, so that is going to be your number one option. If you happen to be home, that's great. But if not, have it held at a facility because it's going to keep that temperature even and it's not going to sit on your porch in the sun or in the snow. And then after that point, you're going to lose your live arrive guarantee because that's usually like one hour within delivery. Cool. A lot of questions today. I wish we could get to them all. I know. You guys, that's why you have to tune in every week, get yes. your questions in. And I feel like we're due sometime soon for just a QA and a yeah. session. But you guys understood the assignment. You asked questions. I hope you all <laughs> smashed the like button too. And subscribe to the channel. Yeah, and then we're going to give away some gift cards. Yes, we are. We're going to do the water box gift card first. Okay, so we have a $50 water box gift card. Ready? Winner is... Christopher Cesares. I don't know if I said that right, but email winners at waterboxaquariums.com. We'll get you hooked up. Uh, when you email, include the country that you're emailing from so we can send you the gift card correctly. Um, and we'll get that out to you tomorrow. And so, awesome Oblivion Reef that they're giving away a $50 gift card to someone as well. Are we ready for that winner? Yeah, ready? No, no. All right, nope. Yep, winner of the Oblivion Reef gift card. Brandon V. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. <laughs> Email <laughs> winners at waterboxaquariums.com to get you hooked up. Yep. Email me. All I need is really just say that you're the winner, verification, um, and I will send the information to Living Reef, and they will email your gift card directly to you. Um, and then you can go shopping. And if you didn't win, just go check out Living Reef Orlando. Um, tons of corals online. They do auctions and reef to reef and all the different forums. Maybe not reef to reef. I don't know where. But um, check them out because yeah. they are definitely have a ton of aquaculture coral to get to you. Absolutely. And um, are we missing anything? Um, well, something pretty major is happening next week, yeah. but we cannot say what it is. That is true. You guys definitely should tune in next week. Um, mark cal calendars for Wednesday uh, the 3rd. Yes. yes. That sounds the, right. The 3rd <laughs> of <laughs> April, which is next Wednesday at 6 p.m., we got a pretty big announcement that you guys are going to want to not miss. So Yeah, so we can't tell that. you what it is, but we're just going to say we're here. There's an announcement, and we better see you then. See you guys. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. And to learn more about Waterbox, visit waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.